I am Robert Scunelian. I am a retired history professor at Calvin University in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I've been fascinated with history as long as I can remember it. And this was a company that I had known ever since I was a little kid. And the chance to find out in more detail what the story was. And the chance to be able to tell the brain, the brain company people themselves what their own story was was something that I thought was an interesting challenge, and I'm very thankful I've had the chance to be able to do that for the last couple of years. So the Brain Company has endured for 115 years. They've survived 19 presidents, endured two world wars, the Great Depression, the Cold War, 9-11. They've had to adapt to new circumstances, the advent of the car, television, the internet, things that nobody would have dreamed of back in 1904. And through it all, the company is still here. The story that intrigued me the most, truthfully, was the legend of Simon getting the quarry as a gambling debt. In 1904, Simon Brain, Sam Brain, the original Sam, gets control of the Valley of the Rocks. According to the story, he won it as a gambling debt. This is where the name Brain and the word stone become fused. Going to the Valley of the Rocks, that blew me away. The original quarry of the Brains, how they started, there were still big rocks <laughs> there that had the drill holes that the men drilled by hand hammering and into the stone. But they worked very hard and they had foresight. Sam had a lot to learn about the quarry business, having not done it before. He, among other things, had to learn how to blast. The story goes when Sam was blasting along uh, West Broadway in Patterson that he put too much of a charge into a hole and he fired it and the explosion was so great sends rocks flying through the residential neighborhood and some of the biggest rocks go through the windows and into the interior of the fancy, probably the fanciest house in the neighborhood owned by the father of Gaetano Federici, Patterson's famous sculptor. He makes it onto the front page of the New York Times where we find that uh, it's gonna cost him at least $10,000 to repair the insides of this house, which in today's money would be probably at least a half a million dollars, maybe more. Simon Brain was successful enough in the Valley of the Rocks to be able to think about expanding his operations. Within 11 years, he had enough money set aside that he could afford to buy a quarry in Hawthorne right next to the Brain family farm on Goffle Road. In this location, it turned out to be enough material that for the next 50 years, they could be blasting rock out of the hill. A lot of the material that comes out of the Hawthorne quarry will become a major part of the growth of northern New Jersey with the beginning of significant projects in the area, such as the Holland Tunnel in the early 1920s, the George Washington Bridge in the late 20s and early 1930s, and then through the Depression where the federal government spends massive amounts of money to put the unemployed to work on construction projects. They all needed cement, they all needed aggregate, and the Brain Company had these materials readily at hand in the Hawthorne Quarry. It's really exciting to think that these forefathers uh, accomplished all of this in difficult times. One of the things that, that I really can remember about the Hawthorne Quarry myself is at Christmas time, when the company would put a cement truck, they would outline it in Christmas lights. And every single year when I was a kid, we'd get in the car at least once and take a ride down along Goffle Road and slow down so that you could get a good look at the Sam Brain truck with the Christmas lights on it. And that was one of the big signs that it was Christmas time. Wow. Isn't it something? <laughs> I tell you, I cannot believe it. I remember like it was yesterday. I can remember working here when I was 14. I would ride my bike here and uh, I ran a loader. Service meant a lot to the company from the very beginning, serving the community, among other things, and probably the one time where people really could see what the brain company was, was when the Morningstar Paisley building exploded in 1967. Fire races through a chemical plant in Hawthorne, New Jersey. The equipment that was available at the quarry in Hawthorne rode down Ray Avenue to the railroad to help the Hawthorne Fire Department put out the fire or get the dangerous materials out of the building and get the debris out of the way while the fire was still going on. And there was never any question that the Brain Company's people would be there 
to do whatever they could to help the firemen in what was one of the worst situations that uh, they ever faced in the borough of Hawthorne. Even though the quarry has stopped operating back in the 1970s, the brain name is very much around in the borough of Hawthorne. During the 1950s, um, Sam Sr. begins to groom Sam Jr. as his successor. So Sam Jr., when he's allowed to drive, is put on the payroll as one of the truck drivers for the company. The end of the Second World War brought a new wave of construction in, into the Passaic and Bergen County. One of the biggest ones is road construction on the Garden State Parkway, building the, the Ford plant in Mawa, which was the biggest car plant in the country when that opened in the 1950s. Going into the construction business meant you had, you had to have a lot more machinery and you needed a place to store the machinery, which led to the development of the headquarters in Wyckoff, but also where Sam lived. He was the fire chief in Wyckoff, was proud of having that position. See that? See that second entrance there? That oh my gosh, that yes! second entrance? We just right came there in. On the left hand side. And the old man was in this, because I built that. Standing in the Halden Quarry kind of makes the whole story come full circle. Because when you think about it, back in 1851, when Art and Cornelia came from the Netherlands to settle in Patterson, their daughter lived in Wayne Township. And whenever Art and Cornelia would go to visit her or she'd come into Patterson to visit them, there was only one way to come. And that was up the hill, past the entrance to this quarry, to visit her. And here we are, 150, 160 years later, and their family name is on the sign right here to the entrance of this quarry. When the Brain Company acquired the Halden Quarry in 1948, it did it with the slogan, helping North Jersey grow. And here we are 50, 60 years later, and the Brain Company is still in the business of making North Jersey grow. He understood the business so well. He understood employees. He wanted everyone to feel like they were so important. Through all of his hard work, he wanted to see his children in the business and he wanted to see it continue. And he was planning and thinking of the future when he died. But uh, God had another plan and his children have done a miraculous job. He would be so, so proud of them. And I think if he could talk to them, he would, he would, he would not believe um, what has happened here. But it's, um, I think, a tribute to him and his love for the business, for his family, for his kids, that they all want to be a part of it and, and stay here and make it uh, thrive and continue to serve other people uh, through the sixth generation and beyond.